Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, I'm glad you've come again. And if you're new, thank you for stopping by. I hope you'll enjoy this video and consider subscribing. If you can hear a humming in the background, it's a fan, it's very hot here in the UK, it's very muggy. Uh, today we're going to be doing a current chat. We haven't done one for so long. There's been so much going on and we'll get into that in a minute. So we're going to colour in Moon Valley by Maria Trelay. We are going to colour in this one. Somebody asked me to do this, why I'm doing it. So yeah, we're going to colour in this one and we'll see how it goes. We're using the Prism Colours. Now, if you haven't got Prism Colours, don't worry. You can use other pencils oh, hello. to uh, colour in your books. Um, it doesn't matter, you can use um, Crayolas or any other kind of pencils. If you want to see me colour with something like Crayola pencils, I've got a huge, well I haven't, Jenna has got a huge set and I'm happy to colour in a book with them just so you see that you can make good pictures with them. So let's get started. This is so sweet, this picture of this little deer. So we'll just zoom in a little bit. So yes, if you want to see me colour with the Crayolas, I think I did one years ago, I'm quite happy to do another one. Just let me know in the comments below. So, what's been going on? Every day has been so much been going on. I've lost my job. I'm no longer working for the, well, I'm no longer working for the company I used to work for. It's a long story, I don't want to get into it, but there you go. I've got enough money to survive for a little bit and I will get a job, but I'm trying to make a go of my eBay store, which if you're interested is Andrea's underscore attic74. You can just go and search by that. I sell mostly clothes, but I do also sell other things, particularly vintage cameras, photography equipment. But basically anything I think might sell, so have a look if you're interested. If you're not, that's fine too. I'm glad you're here watching this. So Jennifer and Paul are out at a party today. And I am here with you. So I don't go to parties with Jennifer because she, she got into this habit of really, really, really sticking by my side and not actually joining in. Now, I don't think she'd do that now, but we've just got into this habit that I do things that I want to do when she's out at a party. The thing is, Paul goes out with his friends. I don't. I'm not bothered about going out. I like staying in and reading, but I don't get to do much um, stuff like watching what films I want to watch and stuff like that because of Jennifer, and that's fine. So what I like to do is I'm going to film this, and then I'm going to go and watch a bit of a film on telly. So I've got some re recorded to my Virgin TV media box, it's called a TiVo, um, and I intend to go and watch something that I've recorded a while back, so yeah. So what else have I been up to? So like I said, I'm working on my eBay stuff, um, buying stuff at auction, the cameras mostly come from auction. Um, I have sold a few things from that auction lot, which is great, not much, but sales have picked up. I've just got to keep working on it, so even on a, a weekend, although I don't do any of the hard part of it, which is the drafting and listing, I do make sure I've got enough drafts saved so I can put five listings up on the weekend, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just deciding whether to put cameras or clothes. I'll probably do cameras today. So this, this Prisma colour, if you're interested, is PC 943 uh, uh, Burn Ochre. It's a lovely colour. Um, yeah, so I am not buying very many books at the moment because of A, I haven't got, I've, what money I've got, I've got to save to live on, um, which I can at the moment, I've got enough. Um, and while I get this eBay up and going, I might get a bar job if I can get one. Um, a bit later in the year when it cools off Christmas. And then I'll uh, see what I can do. But I have got to be honest, I feel less stressed, less pressured and less anxious um, now I'm out of there. Which is good in a way, but it's just hard, you know. I treated myself yesterday, we went, we went out to the fair the fair's on in, was on, it's gone now, uh, in Risker Park. And um, we went to the pub afterwards because it was really hot. 
and I treated myself um, to some scampi and chips. I bought uh, chips for Jennifer as well and she loves their chips. Um, it's like I said, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting down on the books, uh, coloring books because A, I've got so many that I've not used and B, I want to save the money for other things. Now, I will still buy things for myself. Like I said, I treated myself to food. Um, so Paul goes out with his friends and I have not got a problem with that at all. Um, at all, because he doesn't have do much else and he, you know, he goes out to Cardiff with his friends and he has a good time. And that's the main thing. I'm just using my electric dial sharpener here. I, I do like it. I've got to be honest, some of these prison colours are getting a little bit short for that. Um, but I, yeah, so, but Jennifer's fine. She is now in year one at school, which is crazy. Um, she loves school, she couldn't wait to get back. She was so excited. It is so nice to be that age and you know, you'd be excited to go to school, you know. I'm sure when she gets older and she's in high school it, it won't be as exciting. It might be the first day will be, but then the real work starts. And it might not be as exciting. But at least she's she's enjoying it. I might we might take her swimming next weekend, I think. My dad said he'd come with us. There's something else on in the park as well, but we've just had a mini heat wave in the UK. Now with a mini heat wave we're talking like 30 degrees which is not that hot compared to other places in the world. To me it's hot, I can't cope with it. I like my, my temperature below 20 degrees. I'm a cold blood, cold person. I love cold. Um, but it has been very hot. Um, typical they had a terrible summer holiday and then as soon as they go back to school we have a week of blisteringly hot weather. Um, did mean that we walked to school most days, which was nice. A bit of exercise, always good for everybody. A bit of exercise, isn't it? Even I had some. And uh, we, we just had a good time. So if it's not raining on Saturday next week, we will go to this thing in the park. If it is, we might take it to swimming or something, I don't know. Something's beeping. I don't know what it is. Something's beeping. She's got some toys that beep when the batteries run down. I can hear beeping, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> as long as the fan's not too bad, I just can't not have it on. It's too hot. You probably can't hear that beep. Um, might be the dishwasher, actually. I think that beeps when it finishes. But yeah, so, I mean, we didn't even spend much shopping today. Um, obviously, we bought a present for the kid whose birthday it was, Jack, um, and uh, we got uh, that, but usually we spend around 100 and something in, Tes in Lidl's, and then a bit in Tesco where we spent something like 50 quid in Lidl's today, and, uh, and 30 quid in Tesco, which is not bad. I mean, the main reason is, I said, there's no point in buying too much food. We've got so much stuff in the freezer, we need to eat it up before it's too bad, before it goes bad. So, the next couple of weeks, we will be eating a lot of stuff out of the fridge and freezer to get rid of it. So we can have a look at what we need and get space, because we're buying stuff all the time and there's no space, because we've got food that we haven't finished eating yet. There we go, it's just the way it is. But we're getting there and it's, it is part of cutting back. I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm looking forward to autumn and winter. I mean, I've got to be honest, we don't have the heating on much in our house because I don't feel the cold particularly. I feel the heat far more than I feel the cold. Um, we've got a heated blanket, which we put on the sofa for the mornings. Um, we might put the heating on for an hour in the morning when it gets cold, obviously it's only September, it won't go on. I'd try and leave it off till November, I do. Um, yeah. I'm just try and get the uh, cut down on heating because it's food and electricity, gas is so expensive at the moment. 
Um, trying to get fit a bit, which is why we're walking more. And that's fine, I, I don't mind the walking, like when we walk into. Um, Oh, nice, I've got the fan on me, it feels so so nice. I don't mind walking, I start to feel better because I'm walking more, which is great. Now, we have um, had the news that Marilyn's house in Brentwood was at risk at being demolished, it's still at risk, it's not solved yet. Um, the owner sold the property, now this is where it gets confusing, the owners sold the property to themselves under the form of an LLC. Yeah, which says something, something shady going on there. Uh, it might have been for tax purposes, I don't know the American tax system at all. Um, it could be because then they wouldn't get the blame for the demolishment because they knew that uh, people were going to kick off about it. I don't think they realised how badly people were going to kick off about it. To the point that um, everybody started emailing the head of the city uh, well, not the head of the city of LA, but the person who deals with Brentwood, her name's Tracy, and even she didn't want the house demolished, and she raised a motion on Friday morning, LA time, saying that this house should be protected as a cultural historic monument, or historic cultural monument, because of Marilyn's legacy. Now, um, now that motion passed unanimously, 12-0. So now they're investigating whether to make it a cultural monument. The only problem with that is it's in a place where people can't really visit. They could. There is a way of doing it. It's, it's, it's in a very residential zone and we need to have a business permit. But there is a way the city could do it. And that's by doing very expensive, very small tours of like three or four people at a time. Take them in a minibus onto the property and um, take them round. Now the only way in my opinion that would be worth doing is if they restored it to how it was in the 1960s and had replica furniture in it. Much like Elvis's birthplace, Judy Garland's birthplace has replica furniture. It's not the original but it's replica. I would never expect any of the Marilyn fans who've purchased her property to give it up for the museum uh, should that's what they do. But we have to see what they do. It's unlikely that would happen. There is ways but mm. Have a drink, we've got a drink here as well. But we just have to wait and see now. They've got 75 days from Friday for it to be finalised as a historic cultural monument. If not, the permit that has now been uh, revoked, is, that's on hold, will uh, go live and the owners will be able to demolish the property. I'm in two minds about it. I don't want it demolished because, like every Marion fan, I dream of winning the lottery and owning it. And, live, and spending time out there but she's not there it, it's hard I, I try to protect myself pretending I am not bothered but I really am I really would love to see it saved I think we were lucky that it's been there for so long we are we, we know how lucky we've been um, it's not like Graceland on a separate piece of land that's massive like Graceland but saying that that house is to us our Graceland. It, it means the same to us that Graceland means to Elvis fans. Um, and we don't want it demolished. We want it to live forever. You know, or at least, you know, it's a beautiful house in the Spanish colonial mission style uh, that Los Angeles was famous for and has now lost a lot of. And I would, you know, and the fact that she she has seriously tried to she's seriously trying to get it saved is wonderful news. And she looked very happy. And she was very nice, very well spoken. She made good points. Um, I mean, I'm, I get I get annoyed because there's so many people that make mistakes when it comes to Marilyn. And this is another another story is that on uh, I mean I have a channel on TikTok called Marilyn and Me where I talk about Marilyn and I try and get over facts rather than fiction and and I'm fighting I'm only a small channel I've only got just over a thousand a thousand followers and that's fine 
it does take a while and, and I'm wondering if it's perhaps because I put my face on there and I don't just do voiceovers and I don't do stupid edits I don't see the point in them if I want to watch Marilyn I'll go and watch the film I don't need to watch somebody slowing down bits of her footage and putting silly music against it I can watch it myself um, but I do think that there are, there's a particular one channel that frustrates me and I think this, this creator means well because this person, I don't know if male or female, is sticking up for Marilyn and that to me is a positive thing but they have over 400,000 subscribers which means they're making money on their account. I can't because you have to have so many subscribers to, uh, followers to do it and I'm not doing it for money, I do it because I love Marilyn. And they make so many errors. There are so many errors in their research that it annoys me. Things like Marilyn, uh, outside of the house that Marilyn owned, there are four tiles that make up uh, a shield with a Latin inscription in it. Now, the Latin ins inscription says Cursum Proficio, which means I complete the course or my journey is complete, so on. You know, it's, it means I'm home. And Marilyn loved those tiles. But, this person, along with others, and I don't know where they got it from, probably they got it from somebody else that claimed it, says that Marilyn put those tiles there. Well, Marilyn didn't put those tiles there. Those tiles were already there when Marilyn moved in. They were probably placed there when the house was built in the 20s. The house was built in 1929 for um, a studio executive. Uh, or a studio employee. It's a beautiful house. And that, it's just little things like that. The house that TikToker Jasmine Chiswell owns. Now, I... I have a love-hate relationship with Jasmine Chiswell. I love what she does sometimes. And she can be very funny and entertaining, and, and that's what it's about. But she fibs terribly about Marilyn. Um, she picks up things in thrift stores and look, Marilyn, that are similar to things Marilyn had. Is this Marilyn's? Is this Marilyn's? And then at the end she says, no, it's not. I got it at a thrift store. But she's already got it because it's clickbait. And uh, again, she's making money off of her account. Now, I, I don't begrudge her from doing that. That's fine. She, she made a niche, and fair play to her. But again, there are so many things that she said about the house she lives in that are wrong. Now, the house she lives in, she doesn't own it. It's owned by her husband's father. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I think it's great that he, he's bought that house for her, his son and his wife to live in. I think it's fantastic. And I think people who say otherwise are just jealous. I'd love to live in one of her houses. I think it's great. It means that it's been saved. It's a safe, it's a house that's been saved from the wrecking ball. I haven't got a problem with that, I think that's great. But she said things like, oh, Marilyn signed the beam. A beam, why would Marilyn climb, climb a ladder to sign a bloody beam in, in the roof or on the, on the, in the ceilings? Why would she do that? It's written in Sharpie. I don't know when Sharpies first came out, but some people were saying they didn't come out until after she died. I have no idea, and that's not something I bothered to look up. Um, it doesn't even resemble a signature. And I'm not saying that Jasmine Chisel put it there, but somebody has put it there. And it could have been anybody that's lived in that house since. So I'm not going to say anything about Jasmine on that because I don't know where it came from. But it's not Marion signature. But the one thing, there, and the other, one of the other things is saying that they found things in the house that belonged to Marilyn and Joe. And I'll get on to the Joe part of it in a minute. Like magazines. Magazines that were in the incinerator. So the magazines have been in there for 70 years. Yeah, that's a joke. Um, nobody else has ever looked in that incinerator and pulled them out and said, oh, look at it. And then there are magazines about things like packaging. Why would Marilyn read a magazine about packaging? If it was a movie magazine, she'd have more clout on it. But then nobody would want to put and char a movie magazine there. And I'm not saying she didn't find them somewhere, but to claim they were Marilyn's is ridiculous. I'm pretty sure they're not anything to do with Marilyn but that's you know just one of those things um because things that she said they've come they've found in there that house has been inhabited by other people over the last 70 years before she moved in why weren't they found previously and I know people do find things in houses they knock down walls and and rebuild and search and, and it's entirely possible but to find so much is nothing now when it comes on to Joe one of the things she constantly claims is so I'm looking for a colour that the house was Marilyn and Joe's love nest now I do have a problem with this 
one because Um, she claims that it was Marilyn and Joe's honeymoon house. Now, Marilyn and Joe got married in 1954, in uh, January, on January 14th, 1954. Marilyn lived in that house from September to around, uh, she gave up the lease in January, so it was over three, I don't know how many months, three really nine, months. She lived in it for three to four months. We have a check which continue, contains the first and last month's rent for that that house. I'm not going to give you the address. People have put it out there. I refuse to do that because that's not fair on Jasmine. She has a young child. She's pregnant again. I, uh, people could go up there and, and hassle her. And I will not be the person that um, allows that to happen on my watch. So I'm sorry. You can go and find it out yourself. It's not difficult. I was just like that. It's not difficult. Um, lists of barren houses are everywhere and it's not difficult to find out which one it is. In fact, I knew which one it was as, as soon as I saw the garden. I thought, I know that is the death. Um, but then I have been a fan for such a long time. Um, but yeah, so Marilyn lived in it from, I think, the end of September, beginning of October to the beginning of January the following year, which is 53. Now, she met Joe DiMaggio in 1952. We know this. And they were going out. But he never lived there. He probably never even stayed over. Um, he certainly... It certainly wasn't their honeymoon home because they weren't married when Marilyn was renting that. Other, this other TikTok to, I was referring to, the one that gets things wrong, which he, he says that Joe rented it. Joe didn't rent it. We know Marilyn rented it because the checks are signed by Marilyn for the first and last month's rent and the other month, which also says about this devolves me of any more responsibility other than the phone bill. Um, it was a stopgap in the end of 1952, beginning of 53. It certainly wasn't Joe's and Marilyn's love, love nest. It certainly wasn't their honeymoon house. She also claims that Marilyn's ghost is there, and I don't see why, for how she only lived in for three months. Now, we could say the same about Brentwood, because she only lived there for around six months, but she did pass away in that building. More likely, if she was going to haunt any of her, her homes, it's going to be where she was most happy. Um, so I would say maybe the New York apartment at 444 East 57th Street. Apartment 13E, I believe it is. That one, I could see her haunting. Brentwood I could see her haunt in because she died there and she was she did love that house very much but I can't see her haunting a house she lived in for a few months at the end of the year 1952 and it wasn't Joe that rented it Marilyn rented it we have the checks so that's the thing about in America no it's different in the UK you write a check in the UK it goes off to the bank and I believe the bank destroys them I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what happens that. I would yeah, it'd be interested. Or they store them. They do something with them. In America, you sign a check for goods or services. It goes to wherever it goes. It goes to the bank. The bank stamp is cancelled, which means paid, and then they send it back to the original person, I think. And that's why we have so many of Marilyn's uh, checks. And that's how we're able to authenticate her signature. You can tell I am a bit of a fanatic, um, but you've got to remember I have been a Marilyn fan for over 30 years. I will continue to be a Marilyn fan for the next 30 years. All this house stuff has made me want to, uh, to just watch her stuff more and watch um, more documentaries. I'm going to go change the battery. I'll be right back. Oh dear, here we go. I'm sorry, I have been rattling on about Marilyn Monroe for the last 20 minutes. Uh, I love her so much, so I can't actually help it. I do apologize, but I don't, if that makes any sense. No. So yeah, I mean, when I, I was going through the process of losing my job, um, because they said I was, basically they said I was avoiding work, which I wasn't. Which obviously is gross misconduct and I completely agree with that. Uh, I had a technical issue and I will maintain this to the day I die, that I had a technical issue with my phone. I could not hear the callers come through. There was no um, introduction to say that there was anybody there. I could not hear them. So 
I carried on doing stuff as if I wasn't there. So I have music on or TV or TikTok on in the background. You can hear me muttering. It's, I'm working. I'm looking at stuff, but I'm not hearing them. So they think it was deliberate. It really wasn't. I would never do that. I'd been there too long. 12 years I'd been there. And I was actually honest with Louise, the manager. I said, if I was going to do that, seriously, if I was going to avoid... Um, Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the colour. Yep, green. If I was going to avoid calls, I wouldn't do it by literally letting a caller come through and not talking to them. I would go into after call work or I would go into personal and just sit there for an hour until somebody says, Andy, you alright? Well, that's what guessed me. <laughs> you know, if I'd have been using excessive use of after call, I, I wouldn't have had a problem. I could say, put my hands up and say, okay, yeah, it is too much. I agree. I, I'm an idiot. But this is something, and I couldn't, obviously couldn't defend myself because I had no way of defending myself because it was, there was, there was, I, as far as I was concerned, there was nobody there. And you can even hear it on the last call, and this happened for like for six calls that came through. You can actually hear me. I, I noticed for some reason I flipped to the screen which I hadn't and I don't know why I hadn't before I, I flipped to the screen and I could see that there was I could see there was a call there because there's a blue band across the top and I'm like what? and then I'm like hello and um, by that point nobody was speaking so I mean what am I supposed to do I'm not flipping psychic that's better just put in a uh, cream and then I've got this sort of fluorescent yellow to go over the top not exactly the right colour I wanted, but it will do for now. That's enough of that one. And we'll try this one. And later on, I will show you how I do my moons, um, the shimmer around the moon. That's a bit better, it's a bit more yellow. Um, as you can imagine, I was absolutely devastated. Because like I said, I've been there for so many years. And I was happy to stay there for as long as possible. But no, now I am unemployed and probably will never get another job because people will assume because I got sacked for um, worse conduct. But I'm unreliable, so I'm going to be stuck in jobs like um, supermarkets and pubs which I don't want to do it's not quite the right colour uh, uh, it's not this yeah we'll try that one French, French, French yeah. I'll put a little beige over the top of it later so it's in a minute I'm going to start the sky I don't I mean, I, I'm, and I was, I was actually, I've been eating for days. Because they, they, it's not like they, this happened within a space of 24 hours. It took two weeks to decide what we were going to do. So by which point, I was in pieces. And I was very ill. It literally made me so ill. I couldn't eat. I felt sick. And all the time this manager was telling me not to worry, not to lose sleep over it, it was going to be alright. And then she sacked me anyway. Yeah. So it is what it is and I will have to, to manage somehow. I'm very tired. Oh, you should have seen the statement I was in bits, but I mean, I'm all right. I feel less stressed now that it's all done with. And I'm just now trying to cut my pieces and move on. And But I need, I do need my eBay to, to pick up. I'm sorry there's extra adverts in here, but any money can help, uh, whether it's to buy stuff for the channel to make more videos or to help pay the bills. 
that's why I've set up a coffee account I know nobody's bought me one and that's fine you don't have to it's there in case you feel like helping but if you don't I, I, I'm not bothered I don't expect I never expect anything same as I don't expect people to buy me colouring books and send me happy mail I'm not that sort of person that puts myself out there wanting it I might send it to somebody else if I, and I have done in the past when I've been had the money and wanted to um, but This is, I do this for fun. I do this because I like to colour and I like to talk to you. I like to watch your videos as well if you're one of the many channels that I follow. Um, sometimes Jennifer will be watching something and I'll put my headphones on and I'll watch on my phone. Sometimes I'll colour along while I'm doing it or that's mostly when I colour, I like to listen to an audio book. And I am listening to a really good one, so I might listen to that tonight if I'm colouring. I might be colouring tonight. Um, I've given up on my Goodreads, I've got to be honest. Not logging everything and not, not giving up on reading. I haven't, I'm still reading. I've just given up on my Goodreads challenge, which I let set so high. Uh, I'm not going to get anywhere near it, so I don't care. It's all right. So this is actually a purple but I think it looks quite nice the sky there are other ones that could have been used that's purple though. violet, nice all my blues are getting really short unfortunately <laughs> I'll, I will continue this one in another um, colour and chat. I'm going up to up to 30 minutes. And that, that's okay, and I will. Um, uh, I'm not going to do too much more. Just because I want to do something else before they get back. And I have to give up. TV. I don't have to give up the TV actually. I can actually let Jennifer watch on my phone. Um, but what have I been reading? I read recently because uh, I haven't done a wrap up for, for a whole last couple of I might do a wrap up next month because I don't think I'll have read as many. Um, I read The Hobbit last month which was, I've never read it and I really enjoyed it but I couldn't help and this will annoy Hobbit fans I'm sure comparing Bilbo Baggins to the characters in Wizard of Oz Bilbo Baggins is Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion all wrapped into one Gandalf I felt was very much like um, the Good Witch, uh, Linda the Good Witch or in the film uh, and the Wizard all in one and I felt that Smog was kind of like uh, the Wicked Witch of the West. But I guess you could do that with all fantasies if you wanted to. You could find something that you could compare it to uh, The Wizard of Oz or Hobbit or so and so, you know? You could always find something else to compare it to that. There's, there's always there's always something. Yeah. Still a good book. Still enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. I couldn't. I, I tried reading one of them I think it was the, the first in the Lord of the Rings trilogy when I was a lot younger and I went into fantasy then so I couldn't get into it. Today I'll read read fantasy and I've, I've read some fantasy books I've really enjoyed. So I mean I, I'm personal, I prefer murders, mysteries, true crime or thrillers, a um, little bit of romance and so on. I'm, I'm not the smart, I don't like the smart. But it doesn't bother me that people do. People like what they like and that's it. I've just read one called Loyalties by Juliet Ellis, which was okay read. It wasn't the best thing I've ever read. It's certainly not the worst. And it's just about these two girls. Um, these two girls, they're in the same family, but they're like cousins. And basically the head of the family 
for one family, Naomi Miller, she ran a, a timber firm and her sister Ray um, moved with because Naomi stole the man she, she was in love with and married him. And so Ray met somebody else and moved away with this guy and they both set up uh, lumber companies, uh, Miller Timber and Lazarus Timber. So uh, basically Naomi Miller is old and, and dying and she's put it into her will that I th in a way I think she wants to both control both families but also to try and make amends to her dead sister who died the year before her. Um, that um, she wants her grand niece to come out to see her before she passes away but in her will she states that her grand niece and her great granddaughter Felicia have to run the company for 20 years together learning the ropes under the guy who actually will be running it which is Doug I think that was Naomi's son yeah Naomi's son and if they can if they can keep the keep, if they can learn the business and keep it going and they don't neither one of them walks out on the 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 terms of the will they'll inherit the company you know 60 million dollars each um so yeah, and one of the terms is they have to live in Naomi's house for the first two years, and so on. And it, it goes like that way, and history repeats itself in a way that um, the grand niece is dating somebody, and Felicia, the, the granddaughter, steals him from her and marries him. Um, but then she finds somebody in love with somebody else, and all that. So that sort of repeats itself. And it was all right. It, it wasn't, and like I said, it's not the worst book I've ever read. It's not the best book I've ever read, but it was a, a nice filler book. It was very long though, because obviously it takes place over the span of 20 years. I was like, oh, this is a long one. Uh, it, it, it was all right, and I enjoyed it enough. Uh, I didn't give up on it. I'm currently reading the story of uh, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. So he was professionally known as Fatty Arbuckle. He actually hated that name. He hated being called Fatty. Um, and he was a comedian, uh, actor, comedian, singer. In the 1920s, he was the biggest star, he was bigger than Chaplin, made more than Chaplin. Uh, but a scandal in, uh, involving a party during Prohibition uh, ruined his career. So basically, he uh, went to San Francisco to party at the hotel. At a hotel. Um, he didn't invite this person along, somebody invited, they invited this actor named Virginia Rapay, who uh, came along and she died. Um, during the weekend that they were there and he was accused of actually murdering her literally by his weight when they were having that which they didn't do and he was acquitted there were three trials um, and in the third trial he was acquitted and the film and the jury said that there is no words can uh, express the damage that has been done and that he has suffered a terrible injustice having to go through all these trials over and over again and he should be able to retain his place in popular culture and go back to work and he was never allowed to he was blackballed out of the industry um, he did direct later un under the name Will Be Goodrich, William Goodrich, which was actually his fa part of his father's name. His father's name was William Goodrich Arbuckle. And that was a complicated and volatile relationship as well. Um, so I'm reading that by Andy Edmonds, who wrote Hot Toddy about Thelma Todd. So I'm not, I don't know. This is, it is interesting. Um, what else am I wanting to read this month? I'm going to be rereading um, Cursed and Perficio, which is the story of Marilyn's Brentwood House, written by Gary Vitico Rubles, who wrote the um, Icon series as well. Uh, just because of the thing with the house, I, I want to, to read up on it again. And I've got that out, but I haven't actually started it yet. I might, might put it on and might have a read in a minute when I finish this video while I put, put Marilyn on in the background. And I might read uh, Six of Crows. That's another big one. I, I, the books I want to read are quite big, so that's why I'm not worrying too much about my 
Goodreads challenge. I have got a load of small ones that I've got. They both die at the end. I've got a couple of Colleen Hoovers. I got a couple of uh, Taylor Jenkins reads. They're never that long. They're easy reads. But I want something. I don't know. I want something. Oh, I don't know what I want. <laughs> so yeah, I'm way behind on my personal challenges as well. Well. I'm way behind on my Hollywood personal challenge. Agatha Christie, I haven't read September's yet, but I will do at some point. And I haven't read a new Marilyn book yet. Though I have got a few I haven't read yet. I've just got to decide which one. Uh, that won't be long. So. Yeah, I'll tidy this. this. I'll probably do more of the sky. I'm going to stop now, so we're on about 40 minutes. I will do um, the sky off camera because there's a lot of it because I've got all up around here to do. I'm going to probably do that now and then we'll come back and we'll finish the rest of it in the next video. So that's where we are with it so far. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, I really hope I'll see you again soon. I hopefully will. I'm going to try and do another one of these this week in this book. I've still got um, one to do with Jennifer. There's my glasses. I wonder where they've gone. Um, for driving in yeah so me and Jennifer are still planning on doing one together at some point maybe we'll do that tonight and I'll upload it another day um, but thank you for stopping by I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you again very very soon bye everybody bye